In this video, I will show you how to set up a job in SRP Player for milling on cylindrical objects. This is a great technique for expanding the types of workpieces that you're using and generally just taking a different approach to how you mill different objects. Starting off, let's go to the File menu and load in a model. In this case, I will be using a small tiki statue to be milled out of a wooden dowel. Once we have this model loaded in, I want to orient it so that it will uh, be facing down the x-axis. Uh, now, before we go any further, I just want to point out that this technique requires a rotary axis. So if you look down in the bottom corner, I have my MDX50 set up with the ATC present and the rotary axis unit present as well. Continuing on, let's go ahead and change the orientation of this model. So I'll use our, our rotation pick fields here. And that looks good to me. Uh, if your model doesn't come in the same way, you can play around with some of these different options and even the rotation along the Z axis, being our vertical axis here. So once we have that positioned correctly, let's go ahead and scale this up to the desired size. Uh, in this case, I mentioned I'm going to be working with a 2-inch round wooden dowel. So I will go ahead and scale this up just below that kind of outside dimension. So I'll go with 1.8 on this model. Our other axes scaled accordingly. Uh, so far, so good. So the, this completes step one of size and orientation. We can now jump down to step two, type of milling. Uh, moving along here, we can answer some simple questions about how uh, we want this to be milled, and this will be used uh, to determine the tools and strategies under the hood, so to speak, uh, to determine our milling type. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to a better surface finish. I want a clean, smooth finish after. Uh, I'd say this model has many curved surfaces. Uh, if your model has you know, some flat surfaces and some round, just use your best judgment to uh, select an answer here. And then here's where we choose the type of workpiece. So in this case, we can go ahead and select Cylindrical Workpiece and add supports if they are not added already. One of the things I want to point out uh, with using the supports in SRP Player is that by default, they will intersect the entirety of the model. Uh, there are some cases where this can help suspend the object within the workpiece, but other parts where it may affect some of the geometry that we're looking to mill out. So in this case, I will go ahead and edit our supports and just pull them to the edges of our model. So something like that looks good. I'm going to center this one up. We can use our perspectives to assess where they are positioned on the model. This looks all fine to me. I'm going to go ahead and proceed. So click apply to save. Close out here. And that completes step two, which is our milling type. Step three is really where we get into the details of this process, and that being assigning our material type, our dimensions of our block, and some of the details with our toolpath. So let's go ahead and define our material as a hard wood. And our workpiece dimensions, I've pre-checked the sizing here, and I'm working with an 8-inch long dowel that's 2 inches in diameter. All right, now this is a stage where we can conceptually see how this will look within the mill. So I'm going to go ahead and create the toolpath here. Now what this toolpath creation is really defining the strategy or the um, approach that the mill will take in removing material to reveal this model. Uh, note that it will go through two separate passes here, our roughing pass and our finishing pass, and these will use uh, different step overs, in some cases different tools and whatnot. Uh, the nice part about this program is that from the simple questions we answered from step two, all of these things will give us some uh, defaults to work with. If we wanted to go in and modify that toolpath, we can select edit here, and that will open up some details for each of these. But at this point, 
we'll keep things simple and just move right along to our step four. So this completes step three of creating the toolpath, and we will proceed here. The preview results option gives us a rendering of what our object will look like after it's milled. Uh, this is a great step to take here as it can help us determine if there's any irregularities in our model uh, based on our given toolpath. If, for instance, you see something that is unusual or unexpected within this preview, you're not out the time and material involved with this job. Additionally, there are some helpful hints here to uh, troubleshoot any irregularities in our model here. But in this case, for a quick and simple model, uh, this is just as I would expect, and I'm pretty happy with our results here. So let's go ahead and jump to step five. And this is really our last check where we can start our cutting job. The nice part about this program uh, is that when we start our cutting, it will first off remind us to configure our magazine to make sure our tool is in the correct position. It will also give us a reminder to uh, set our origins in the correct spot of the machine. Uh, as much as I use these machines, I always appreciate that extra reminder to check our um, origins on the machine. So this really wraps up a simple setup of a model for a cylindrical workpiece.